Hi class and welcome to your week five review. I wanted to talk to you a little bit about this week's art project in a video and give you an example um, in case uh, you need it. So what is the vanitas? Uh, vanitas is a type of still life that is symbolic. You'll see imagery that suggests life, uh, youth, beauty, age, time, death. Uh, the vanitas, it's, it's a little bit of a bummer. Um, it's a symbolic still life that quite literally reminds the viewer that um, you live, uh, youth turns into age, beauty fades, uh, earthly riches don't mean anything, and then you die. Uh, this is a type of still life that becomes really popular during the Baroque period, specifically in areas of um, the of Northern Europe, where the Protestant faith has taken hold and you're seeing less religious commissions. Uh, the Vanitas is a way of making the still life really exciting, I think, because everything means something. Um, this semester, you're you're being given several art projects that ask you to uh, find connections in art of the past in your present, to you know, see the themes that artists were working with and make them your own and use that to prompt the creation of something new. It's just a different way to learn about art. And I think it's a really fun way to learn about art. Now, a traditional vanitas usually has an hourglass, uh, coins, jewelry, books, musical instruments, skulls, uh, as an obvious symbol of death. Uh, you might have those things lying around, maybe you don't. But what I want you to think about after you read about the vanitas is what do those things mean? What in your house could symbolize beauty or youth or the passing of time? Um, so I just want to show you my, my Vanitas still life and I'll, I'll talk to you about the symbolism to model what I'm looking for from your work. So first you have to understand what a Vanitas is. So read the assignment instructions, follow the link to see more visual examples. Second, you need to find symbols in your own life and world, maybe go outside and pick up some rocks or pick some flowers or grass, bring nature inside, um, but find things that you can use that are just lying around the house. I set this up with just a few things that are on my desk. So I've got symbols of youth in the artwork that my daughter made and her little bracelet. This also can serve as a symbol of earthly riches, right? Look, look at this wonderful little glitter filled bracelet. Um, so that's my contemporary take on youth. Uh, a lot of vanitas will include vices. So maybe I put my coffee cup in here. I don't know. Maybe I don't. I think I don't. I don't like how that looks in there. It disrupts the flow. Um, I've got this picture of my cat as a symbol of death. Um, my cat it passed on. So um, that's my symbol there, her little memory. A symbol of life, life could be in my cactus. Uh, cactus also carries a lot of symbolism, right? Cactus are really hardy. They, miss, uh, they withstand mistreatment, overwatering, underwatering. Uh, they, they're survivors, right? So there I've got uh, a symbol of life. I need a symbol of time. And you could argue that a plant could symbolize time, uh, but I also want to include my watch. Uh, because I know in a regular vanitas image, I might see an hourglass or a lit candle to suggest the passing of time. Um, you know, this isn't the 1600s. I don't light my house with candles, uh, but I keep time with my watch. So again, I've taken these contemporary objects that I live with and I found how they connect back to uh, this style of art that we're going to study next week. The other goal of the Vanitas project, um, other than for you to make connections 
from your present into the past and vice versa is for you to show me that you understand uh, Baroque compositions. So one of the requirements is to arrange your, your objects and then photograph them like they're a Baroque work of art. So what is Baroque? Baroque is asymmetry. Baroque is diagonal line. Baroque is movement. Uh, if all these things were clustered together, for instance, the reason I took out my cup is because when I did, there it established visual balance between the sides, right? So my eye, instead of going like this, sort of went to the center and then stopped. So by removing the cup, I've established or reestablished asymmetry, right? Another aspect of Baroque art is drama. So how do I make this dramatic? There's like glitter and a picture of a cat. Um, it's not the most dramatic work. Well, I could turn all the lights off in my studio and maybe angle my desk lamp at it to create the sweeping light source. Or I could ask my husband to come hold, you know, a dark uh, towel or something behind it before I, I photograph it. So get creative. Um, you're simply just going to use your phone. Take a picture, uh, write to me about the symbolism, uh, figure out the connections to the Baroque Vanitas, and most importantly, have fun with it. This is just an alternative way to experience art history in your present. Uh, the other thing that happened this week is that I made your midterm uh, project available. It's not due until October 18th, but in Monday's announcement, I gave you some tips for getting started, how you might think about a theme for that project. Uh, unlike a traditional research paper where you'll look something up and then you'll give me all the historical details like uh, Michelangelo painted the Sistine Chapel uh, under the request of Pope Julius II. It took from 1508 to 1512. It's a fresco. It contains images from the book of Genesis. That's great, but that's all in the book. Um, I want you to be able to use this project to go behind what, what you can read or beyond what you can read and be a little creative with it too. So for this paper, for midterm, I'm asking you to fashion a fictional exhibition. So you can pick three works of art, you know, find three things that you really like, find the connection between them. Tell me, you know, what's the name of your exhibit? Why should I go see it? And then you'll talk about why you've selected these works, what you think they mean, how do you interpret them? Um, you will provide a little historical context, uh, but you'll also get to do some critical and creative thinking. And that's really one of the main goals of uh, my course. So take a look at those requirements. Look back at Monday's announcement for tips on getting started. And if you have any questions, please uh, reach out to me in the Canvas inbox. All right. Well, I hope that you guys have a great rest of your week. Thank you for watching. and. I'll talk to you soon.